There's this nice article about you, the man who would unseat Nancy Pelosi. And uh, in there, there's this picture, not that one, here you go, uh, of you a decade ago, uh, this you with uh, a, an also younger looking Robert Mueller. Uh, what, why, what were you doing hanging out? What was this all about? So at the time I was running a program, uh, I was launching a program against racial and religious profiling on behalf of a nonprofit startup called Muslim Advocates. Right. Bob Mueller was the head of the FBI, and I would describe him as our, to some extent, principal nemesis. You know, Bob Mueller was at the time overseeing what I described as COINTELPRO 2.0. And this is the FBI's program of infiltrating uh, Quaker organizations, Muslim organizations, peace activists, animal, right act, animal rights activists. Wow. And the continuation of the government's use of human intelligence to subvert and neutralize domestic dissent is one of the things that ultimately got me uh, both into this race and also deeper into my own advocacy. In 2008, I was uh, uh, had the opportunity to advise President Obama's transition team on civil rights issues, and we gave them a whole bunch of recommendations that they subsequently ignored. And then I spent the next few years going at the FBI, uh, organizing coalitions of civil rights organizations. Um, we successfully, one of the letters I wrote had dozens of civil rights organizations that signed on to it. This would have been 2010. And we prompted a question from Senator Leahy at an oversight hearing in the Senate, uh, asking the FBI leadership how they legally justified uh, their program. And the response, frankly, was fascinating and never got the follow-up that it uh, deserved. But it is precisely the failure of Congress to answer important questions that is driving me to run. Because the last time I had a chance to ask any questions of an executive official, they arrested me for it. Uh, with a seat in Congress, they actually have to answer your questions. And I'm very eager to get some answers to my questions. I, I would like to think so too, but I've watched some of these things. Don't seem to get questions answered even then. It, it, I mean, honestly, it seems like it's gonna take more than a constitutional lawyer. We need 535 of them. It's, it, there's, you know what I mean? It, there's a lot to go in there. There seems to be a very systemic issue with all of Congress not seeming to really feel like it needs to be held accountable to anybody. That's I certainly theory. agree with your point about accountability, but just to press the case about the, because I hear the, um, I don't want to say futility, but the resignation perhaps in that view. Yeah. And certainly right that we need the entire chamber for legislation. Okay. But when we talk about answering questions, you know, I'm talking ultimately there about oversight and yes. oversight doesn't take 530 members. You know, we've seen Ilhan Omar use oversight like in art. You know, I haven't seen a member of Congress prove that skilled in leveraging the oversight context to challenge official narratives and spark viral conversations about deep seated issues in our body politic that we haven't had debates about in generations. No one's done that, I think, since I don't even think Russ Feingold yeah. or, or Paul Wellstone did that in the same way that that a freshman member of Congress, refugee from Minnesota, is tearing it up. And Jeez. and that's the kind of, uh, frankly, leadership that I hope to emulate and, and, and learn from and extend and empower. You know, at the end of the day, we need that kind of voice represented, at least on all the committees. And, and I hope to diversify the set of branches in Congress and the committees, uh, particularly in which that critical long overdue and, and long absent voice is represented. Outstanding. Yeah.